Reggie Middleton. Let's get into some prognostication. Uh, Stacy. Well, if you're seeing this, we made it to 2015. <laughs> so, Reggie, give us a big call for 2015. What do you see as the big theme happening this year? Is it market crash? Is it bond crash? Is it equity crash? Is it housing market crash? If it hasn't crash? happened it already, <laughs> um, you're going to have an equity market correction. Okay, the equity market correction is going to be followed by real estate market correction, all caused by the same thing. The free money, okay, people, you get drunk, you're going to drink with so much before you throw it back up. And uh, if he hasn't earled yet, the market will earl um, sometime in 2015. The amount is difficult. You know, unfortunately, my crystal ball batteries died on the way over here. It was a long plane ride. But uh, I see it will happen most likely in 2015. All right, so you say stocks first, property second. It reminds me of 1987, you had a stock market crash. The real estate in New York didn't crash until 1990. Right. Same thing in the UK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about, um, we've had zero interest rate policies for years now. Um, it, and we're allegedly have pulled back on quantitative easing. Are we really doing that? What's going to happen to all those people, all those misallocation of capital that has happened? And it's been one of a historic, I think, the, the, the sort of people chasing yield have invested in the most bizarre things. What, what, is there a reckoning there? Uh, there will be when it happens, but you know, I have yet to see, I hear it in the news, I have not seen any uh, pullback of quantitative easing. You know, if the US raises interest rates like they promised to do, every other quarter for how many years now? Yeah. You know, if they do it, then you're gonna have that correction is gonna be forced upon it because now you're gonna have a reconciliation of reality and financial markets. Uh, the banks can't afford it. You know, if you take ZERP out, how much economic activity and true earnings are banks developing, uh, pushing out? You have entities with the stock buybacks. If you borrow money and buy back your stock, right? You're not raising earnings, you're raising earnings per share. You're actually raising economic activity. So as a CEO of a big Fortune 500 company, a non-financial company, I am now becoming an investor. I'm actually buying stock versus running my company, okay? If IBM, if Apple and anybody else finds that the best use of several billion dollars is to buy stock versus to produce new products or services, well then, um, there's no growth avenues. So they're basically eating themselves from the inside out. You know, it, when interest rates go up, you can no longer afford to buy stocks. Earnings per share now drop because you can no longer reduce the share base. Earnings never rose in the beginning. You know, revenues um, stagnated, but they lift earnings through machinations of financial engineering. Well, this is uh, IBM you mentioned. Remarkably, they've spent $108 billion buying back their shares, their own stock in the last few years. Um, only they're, they're not reinvesting in the company. So when interest rates go up, are we just gonna see that company just evaporate one day? Uh, well, you probably see something negative, but it would be mirrored by everybody else who did it as well. Yeah, you I know? mean, this is Even why Apple did it. typically yeah. crashes are very sharp, sudden, and severe. They right. say markets climb the uh, staircase and fall down the elevator shaft <laughs> because of this exact process, right. because the earnings are manufactured and they start to hollow out the company right. to exactly. create those f fake earnings, essentially. Right. So there's a very, very little underneath that veneer mm -hmm. of profitability. So once the veneer is cracked, then it's a long way down because they've been hollowing it out for years. It wasn't a sudden certain reversal in business prospects. Mm -hmm. They've just hollowed that company out, hollowed that market out, and then once the, re the reversion comes, it's sudden and severe. Yeah, and, and you know, Richard Middleton has to blame management. Imagine IBM if they spent $108 billion on R&D. Imagine, with just a 10% yield, right? That $10.8 billion in R&D came up with a new blockchain technology, a new web, anything. Instead, they bought their stock which will probably end up tanking anyway. So, you know, management wants to appease short-termism of the Wall Street, you know, the street, et cetera, versus growing the company. It's your fault, management. Well, Reggie Middleton, you've been quite good here in the UK where one often finds one refers to oneself and a third <laughs> term, like Her Majesty refers to herself, I believe, as Her Majesty. <laughs> I'm going to start calling myself Max Kaiser. When Max Kaiser says this and when Max Kaiser says that, <laughs> Anyway, we got to go. So happy 2015, and uh, we'll catch up again soon. Okay, look forward to coming back.